Hey everybody, this is Moballer12 here to help quench that knowledge thirst. For this topic, I'll be specifically talking about acid halides. Uh, this will be a continuation of our discussion on acid derivatives. Okay? So again, acid halides. Before I get into it, quick little update. Again, I do have a Facebook fan page. Link in the description box. Show your love and support. Like the Facebook fan page. You know, help spread the word about Moballer12. Let's make 2013 the year of Mobile 12 okay let's do that okay so help spread the word uh, let your friends know let your family know um, and let's do that okay that would be really appreciated um, another thing about the new series so the next thing I want to talk about is the new series so I do have a name for the new series it will be called check it moose the reason why it's moose uh, as part of the title of the series is because that's one of the names uh, nicknames that I've gotten over the years so yeah, so it'll be Check It Moose. That'll be the name of the series. Very, pretty straightforward. Okay, that the to extravagant about it. Okay, but I think it's pretty catchy. Check It Moose. That'll be the name of the series. Again, start uploading your, uh, start posting your questions on, on my Facebook fan page or upload your video on the Facebook fan page with your specific question. Again, please keep your questions very specific. Okay. Um, I did get a question from a gentleman or a lady. I'm not sure who it was because they didn't have a picture um, you know they didn't have a profile picture for their Facebook fan page but nonetheless I got a question that was very ge uh, that was very generic and very general um, they asked uh, can you talk about the general processes of GC gas chromatography and high pressure liquid chromatography um, that's a very general question now I'll be happy to talk about that specific process, about that specific instrument, whatever it may be, but ask a specific question about that. Um, like, oh, what type of compound do we typically deal with when we're dealing with GCs and, 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 or uh, with um, HPLCs? Stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, another example of a very specific question would be, um, like, hey, Mobile at 12, you know, I've been having difficulties with uh, the Grignard reaction with the esters that are in the ring. How would you do that type of problem, you know? Um, that's a very specific question. I'll be happy to answer that type of question, okay? So, keep it very specific. Any problems that have been giving you difficulty, feel free to post post that specific question because those are the types of questions I'm looking for, okay? So again, um, just a quick little uh, overview of the stuff I've talked about. Again, Facebook fan page, link in the description box, help spread the word, show your love. New series, name of it will be Check It Moose. Um, also, uh, please ask specific questions and that's pretty much it okay so that's about three minutes spent on <laughs> on an update okay let's let's get right into the problem now In, into this topic okay so again we'll be talking about acid halides specifically for these examples I picked the the halogen chlorine so we'll be calling it as acid chlorides I could have replaced every single one of these chlorines with a bromine and we could have called it acid bromides okay or acyl bromides or acyl chlorides these are all basically different names for the same thing okay so acid hal acid chloride acyl chloride same thing okay again a little bit talk about the notation again R represents carbon groups okay for the starting material you guys should be comfortable with that uh, notation that I use in almost all my videos also I talk about bases here I say base base I put a very generic term because in this specific in these specific problems the base can either be sodium hydroxide or pyridine pyridine looks something like this I'll just draw it briefly for you guys that's pyridine for you okay it's a nitrogen a heterocyclic ring uh, with one of the atoms being replaced by a nitrogen one of the carbon atoms replaced by a nitrogen it's almost like a benzene ring replace one of the carbons with N so that's a pyridine and it's a base and you can either use that or sodium hydroxide you should be familiar with the notation for sodium hydroxide um, and I'll explain the whole purpose of it but I just wanted to put a generic term to represent either one of those two bases that you can use those are the most common types of bases you will see with these types of problems so again let's get started Again, I'm going to go through the reaction mechanism. It's a little bit long-winded, and it will make these videos extremely dragged out. Um, eventually, in the near future, I might make a video on uh, the mechanism. But again, I just want to show you guys how to go from starting material to product. That's the whole goal. So the, for the first part of the video, I'll be talking about how to go from starting material to product. And the second part, 
I'll be doing some examples. Same structure like I did for the carboxylic acid video. So let's get started, okay? Um, first thing we have is the acid chloride. Again, the chlorine is going to be your leaving group and we're going to be treating it with water under basic conditions, okay? All we have to do to draw the product is replace the chlorine with an OH group from the water. So our product will look something like this. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Now I talked about the base. I said that I'll be discussing with the whole purpose of the base. Through the course of the reaction mechanism, one of the byproducts you generate is hydrochloric acid, HCl. Now the problem with generating HCl is that it can be involved in side reactions, but we don't want that. Okay, we don't want no side reactions because it could really affect our product, it could affect things in solution. So as HCl is being produced, one of the bases I've talked about, sodium hydroxide or pyridine, is going, is going to remove the HCl. The base is going to react with HCl and, and remove it from solution. So that's the whole point of having these reactions done under basic conditions. Okay, To remove the HCl so it won't be involved in side reactions. That's the whole point. Make it as simple as that. Okay, So there you have it. Moving on to the second reaction, we have a, again an acid chloride or ACO chloride reacting with a carboxylic acid. You can also see the same reaction being done with a carboxylate anion, which is effectively the, effectively the same thing as a carboxylic acid, except we have uh, this H missing, it's an anion, so we have the negative charge in the oxygen, and we have some type of cation to kind of neutralize that charge. Um, but nonetheless, same thing. And what we'll do is replace the chlorine with this group here that I have in brackets. Okay. Again, this R represents a carbon group, and I put a little apostrophe there or a little um, mark there. Let me zoom in so you guys can see this. Okay. I put a little mark there to represent that this carbon group does not have to be the same as that carbon group there. Okay. So this piece here this thing in this bracket here replaces this chlorine in this bracket here okay so effectively if you look about uh, if you look at it and think about it you effectively make an anhydride okay and you could see it I mean you should be able to see that you'll form an anhydride as this oxygen will be bounded to this carbon of the carbonyl so how I, how I would draw the um, anhydride will be the same using the same techniques that I use uh, in my previous video on carboxylic acids, okay, I'll draw the acid chloride first, and I'll draw the carboxylic acid facing the OH group of the carboxylic acid facing the chlorine. Okay, I would erase the chlorine, erase the H from the carboxylic acid and connect and link the two things together so effectively what you form is this anhydride there it's as simple as that no need to make it complicated the next reaction we have dealing with acid halides or acid chlorides in this case will be that with a alcohol under basic conditions. Now mind you, this reaction can occur with both, uh, with all three, primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols, and I've discussed that, what those are in many videos, so you guys should be familiar with primary, secondary, tertiary alcohols, what they look like, what their structure, t what their structure typically takes the form of. Um, mind you that primary alcohols react the fastest because of sterics, okay? Um, they're not that sterically hindered while tertiary alcohols react the slowest because they're sterically bulky, they're sterically hindered, okay? So all you have to do to draw the product, again, is replace the chlorine with this group that I put in brackets, okay? With this OR group. Again, this R prime represents, and this R prime represents a carbon group that does not have to be the same as this R carbon group here, okay? This could be any type of carbon group, okay? Again, replace the chlorine with this piece here, and effectively you form an ester that looks like this. So draw your starting material without the chlorine and replace it with the O R prime group. There you have it. That's the third reaction. Again, we have the base to help remove HCl from the um, 
help remove HCl from solution so that it does not further react. So we do generate HCl as a byproduct, and like, but the explanation as far as why we have the base again is to remove the HCl from having any side reactions. Okay, very simple. Uh, next reaction is acid chloride with an amine. Okay. Under basic conditions, the reason for the base again is the same as the previous examples that I've talked about. All we have to do is replace the uh, chlorine with this group that I put in brackets here. Now, if you recall from my previous video which, where I talked about carboxylic acids, okay, I explained to you guys that this R prime and R double prime can either be H's and carbon groups, and the same thing applies in this case as well. This R prime and R double prime can be H's, they could be carbon groups, alkyl groups, anything like that, okay? So realize that. See, in all these other examples where I talk about R, it's specifically a carbon group. They don't uh, designate any H's. But in this case of an amine, this piece right here, specifically this reagent, this R prime and R double prime can be an H or a carbon group. Something to keep in mind, okay? So again, replace the chlorine with this piece here. Again, your chlorine is your leaving group. So effectively, you will have something like this. Again, you will generate HCl, but it will be removed by the base plus HCl. There's your HCl. Hey, everybody. I wanted to apologize for this abrupt change in format. Initially, I had all eight reactions uh, that you guys needed to know on one board, um, but I didn't have enough room to work with, so I had to kind of transition to make some more space for myself so I'm finishing up the last four reactions here um, so let's see we left off with the fourth reaction which was on acid chlorides with amines now we're gonna start off with acid chlorides with the lithium aluminum hydride also known as your reducing agent um, the reaction mechanism of this this specific reaction is very similar to that of of uh, what was the name of that video I had the name of the video is called the reduction of carbonyls where I have this reagent in that video and I discuss this reagent in detail and how it reduces aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids and esters so if you want a very detailed understanding of the mechanism okay um, this mechanism right here for this reaction follows a very similar pattern to to that of those of that specific video so I'll put a link in the top right hand corner of this video so you can check it out again so, but to just give you a basic summary of the reaction mechanism, um, lithium aluminum hydride is a reducing agent and is the source of two hydride ions. In the the first hydride ion, you know, this is a very uh, simplistic view of it. The first hydride ion adds into the carbon of the carbonyl. You form your O negative, okay. Um, and then you regenerate your carbonyl, expel the chlorine. The second hydride ion adds in. Um, you regenerate a O negative and then you have the second step which neutralizes it. If that's kind of confusing by me saying it verbally, check out that video where I discuss it with drawings, so on and so forth. But nonetheless, in order for us to go from starting material to product, which was the whole purpose of this video, just to show you how to go from one thing to the next, all you have to do is erase the chlorine, erase one of the bonds from the carbonyl, and add an H to the oxygen. So effectively your product will look like this. See, erase the chlorine, erase one of the bonds from the carbonyl, and um, add an H to the oxygen, and you form your primary alcohol. You always form a primary al alcohol in this specific case, always, okay? There's no exceptions to it. So again, your hydrogen atoms added in twice to the carbon of the carbonyl. Reaction six, you have a acid chloride reacting with dibol H. Um, in this case, dibol H is the source of one hydride ion, adds into the carbon of the carbonyl. Um, you form your O negative, then you regenerate your carbonyl while expelling the uh, chlorine atom. A very simplistic view, but the reaction mechanism of this guy right here is very similar to the first step of the reaction mechanism of this guy here. Um, so again, if you want to understand the reaction mechanism of this and this, check out that video, Reduction of Carbonyls. Very, you get a very basic understanding of that video and of the reaction mechanism. Uh, so all you have to do to draw the product is replace the chlorine with the hydride ion with this H and um, you'll get your product that looks like this. 
you'll get an aldehyde. You always get an aldehyde, okay? Uh, reaction number seven, again, is you have an acid chloride reacting with the Grignard reagent. In the lithium aluminum hydride case, we added two H's into the carbon of the carbonyl. I didn't draw the H's, but the H's are right here. Okay, these guys here came from this guy here. In this case, instead of adding H's to the carbon of the carbonyl, when you react with a green reagent, it adds carbon groups to the carbon of the carbonyl. So effectively, your product will look almost exactly like this guy here, but except instead of having H's, there will be R groups. And again, these R groups, which I have a mark here to represent that this carbon group does not have to be the same as this carbon group, but nonetheless, it has to be a carbon group. Unlike the amine case that I showed you for reaction 4, um, those R groups can be a H or a carbon, but in this case, this has to be carbon groups. So your product will look like this. So we'll do the same technique that we did in this example here, but instead of adding H's there, we'll put in R groups there, which are carbon groups, and we get a tertiary alcohol. So a primary, oh, excuse me, not a primary, what am I saying? You'll always form a primary alcohol here, but a tertiary alcohol here. Always. Always. Okay, there's no exceptions to it. you always form an aldehyde here. Okay. Um, the reaction mechanism is very similar to that of the reaction mechanism I discussed in my video called the uh, Greenard Reaction. So I'll put a link in the top right for that video if you want to see the Greenard Reaction mechanism. Very similar, okay. Um, the final reaction is you have an acid chloride reacting with this Gilman reagent, okay? Um, this is an organometallic uh, reagent, okay? Organo referring to the organic aspect, which is this R group, which is going to be your carbon group. Metallic referring to the copper lithium portion of it. Um, let's see. Um, all you have to do to draw the product, which is always going to be a ketone, replace the chlorine with the R group here. Again, this R group here, which I have a mark there, is a carbon group. It doesn't have to necessarily be the same as this carbon group here. So your product will look like this. And it's always going to be a ketone. Always. So again, a quick little overview of the last four reactions. Um, always a primary alcohol when reacting with this reagent. Erase the Cl. Erase one of the bonds here. Add an H. This one here, replace the chlorine. Add an H. In place of the chlorine, get your aldehyde. Very similar to the, the reaction 5, where instead of adding H's, you add carbon groups, which are these R prime groups. You get your tertiary alcohol. And the final one, replace the chlorine with this R group here. You get your ketone. And that's it, guys. Um, again, I apologize for the abrupt uh, transition from the first four reactions to the last four reactions, but I had to in order to have some space to work with. And uh, stay tuned to the second part where I go through a bunch of examples that should help solidify uh, these reactions, okay? So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next part. This is Mobile 12 signing out.